What do you choose for sleep? Yeah, my favorite sleep cocktail based on really good, solid, peer-reviewed science is magnesium threonate. It's T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E, threonate. And something called apigenin, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N, which is basically a derivative of chamomile. Those two mm. things work really well to, they essentially shut down the forebrain thinking, anticipating part of your brain, allow you to drift off into sleep really well. Oh, I need that all day yeah. then if yeah. you shut that down. You know, well, and then theanine is also the, is the third thing in the cocktail. The, isn't theanine, uh, that is also a nootropic. So theanine uh, also turns on what's called the GABA system. It's like an inhibitory neurotransmitter and it helps suppress anxiety and kind of turn off thinking. It helps you make the transition into sleep. Yeah, so it's magnesium three and eight. I'm going to write all this sure stuff thing. down because I think I do need this. Yeah, and sleep is obviously- I obvious. sleep pretty good, but it's always- uh, These are a game changer. I'll okay. be amazed if it doesn't help. So it's magnesium three and eight, T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E. And that's important because there are a lot of T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E. Oh, and eight, three and eight. He's got it right there. There it is. Young Jamie um, on the ball, and if, as always. And basically, you know, people will probably want to know about source. In this case, you just go for price, right? I mean, go for if you have a favorite brand, go for that, but go for price, you know. So, um, magnesium three and eight can cross the blood brain barrier because when you take magnesium, it goes into your gut. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily get into your brain. You've got a barrier around your brain that prevents certain things from getting in because this tissue doesn't regenerate, right? right? So. The three and eight form has a gets brought across the blood brain barrier by a transporter. Other forms like magnesium malate, magnesium citrate, those are good for other things. Magnesium malate is great for muscle soreness. Magnesium citrate is a great laxative, but uh, magnesium three and eight is going to be the one that's going to allow you to drift into sleep better. You know, it's interesting that you're saying this because uh, one of the things that I've found that relaxes me more than anything is uh, Epsom salts. Hmm. You know. Um, I'm a big proponent of the isolation tank and the sensory deprivation tank oh, is all great. filled with magnesium. It's all filled with, with uh, Epsom salts. And, and it can go transdermal. Yeah. So that's a really unusual situation where if you, you know, you get, and there are some magnesium creams and things like that. But you're not going to get it in the kind of volume that you get it when you lie in it like that. And when you're doing that, what, what magnesium is that? So that's usually a uh, magnesium biglycinate which mm -hmm. is another one of these forms of magnesium that can get transported into the brain really easily. And most people actually are magnesium deficient. I think um, mm. th most people could, would do well by increasing their magnesium intake. I supplement, but I think I supplement with citrate. Yeah, so citrate has its value. Malate, again, is good for muscle soreness. But three and eight, what you want to take is about 300 to 400 milligrams. Okay. But what you'll notice is on the bottle, it'll say elemental magnesium, and then magnesium will be 300 to 400, and mm -hmm. then it'll say equals 1,000 milligrams. Basically, just go for 300 to 400 milligrams, and you're good. And then the other thing is apigenin, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N. And this stuff is terrific. It basically, that's the only source I'm aware of. Oh, is, this is, is like Swanson. a cocktail. Yeah, and I should be very clear that uh, maybe because I've been blabbing about How this. How is this uh, this cocktail put together? Did you just put this together? No, so it's I want to be really clear. Together. I have no relationship to these brands or anything okay. there. Um, I've been blabbing about this on my podcast. Oh, that's why. And so someone is clearly gonna making money out of the Amazon partnership thing or whatever. That's why they put it. But those are the three things. Well, I bet a bunch of people just started buying it together because yeah. this is just frequently bought together. Right. So those are the three that I recommend. And then L3. And, and so for Apigenin, it's 50 milligrams. Women see the prostate health thing and they freak out. 50 Oh, women yeah. see prostate health thing it, and they freak well, out? Well, they think, oh, is it testosterone oh, in a bottle? Oh, for guys. Yeah, right. whereas all the... the the gym rats are like testosterone in a bottle. Yeah, yeah they get excited. Yeah, bro. Um, so apigenin turns on a chloride channel. The, the way neurons work is you got stuff going in and out of them. And the chloride channel tends to turn off neurons a little bit in a good way and creates a, um, a kind of a, a little sedative role. Uh, it kind of helps you drift off into sleep. And it's the same stuff that's in chamomile tea. So this has no negative uh, side effects for women? Not that I'm aware of. Uh-oh, I hate that term. Well, you know, okay. <laughs> So I know a number of people, including women, that use it and are fine, are still fertile, you know. Mm. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't tested their, their fertility personally. What but is I, the idea of it? The, what the benefits for prostate health? So it does seem to have a small amount of estrogen antagonism. It can block mm. estrogen receptors a little bit, but it's a very weak affinity. Maybe it can calm some ladies down. 
We could I said that. We could not, <laughs> not Mr. Huberman. Uh, thank you. Well, just ye- a joke. Years ladies. ago, stop screaming. <laughs> years ago, I worked on hormones and development. We could we could go there. Hormone effects on the brain. Uh, that was my master's thesis. But the um, but theanine, T H E A I N N E, is also has a little bit of an anxiolytic and anti anxiety effect. Mm. And there is a, something to think about with theanine. People now put theanine in energy drinks so that people will drink more energy drinks and not get the jitters. Interesting. And so it's uh, it's showing up. I recommend taking these 30 to 60 minutes before sleep. And what do you recommend for a dose for theanine? For theanine, it's going to be 100 to 400 milligrams. However, if you're a sleepwalker or you have what are called night terrors where you have really disturbing dreams, leave the theanine out because oh, the boy. dreams on theanine are, are intense. Really? I like them, but it's intense. <laughs> you know, but I'm into dreaming. I think dreaming is a really interesting thing. I think instinct. theanine is in uh, that neuro gum. Isn't it, young Jamie? Yeah. I think it's in there. They're putting it in everything now. The one thing about magnesium threonate I should mention is that there are some data, not a ton, that it's also neuroprotective. So there's at least one study, peer-reviewed, independent, you know, not not a company paying for the study, but done by a laboratory with no bias, that shows that magnesium threonate can offset some forms of age-related cognitive decline. So that's also that's, that's another reason to. You so the cocktail of the three of them, yeah. the reason for putting the three of them together? There seems to be some sort of synergistic effect because some people, of course, will, will take something for a long period of time and then it'll stop working. You can take these. They're not habit forming. I mean, I've taken them consistently and then taken breaks and then go back on them. And they really, in most cases, I mean, I guess if someone had a heart condition, a serious heart condition, anytime you mess with magnesium because you have neurons in your heart, ne- magnesiums are involved in neuron function. You, you, obviously, the usual things, check with your doctor, you know, right. and obviously I'm not a doctor and professor, so I profess things. I'm not prescribing anything, but uh, it's helped a tremendous number of people get into sleep better and stay asleep. 